All right, welcome to episode 31. This is Amber of the Datsun uh, 521 Restore. Uh, it's going from good to bad. So in this episode, I'm gonna uh, finish putting the windows in, put the regulators in, mess around with some other little bits and pieces, trim panels. And then I try to figure out the engine. Um, I just noticed that the torque spec, the heads weren't torqued. So I was just torquing them. They're supposed to be 61. I torqued them to 40. Started up, you'll see it on the video. And I tried to take them up to 60, what they're supposed to be. And this bolt popped out. See the threads on the, luckily, maybe the block is still good, but the threads popped off the bolt. There's three different size bolts and they weren't in the right holes because this shouldn't have popped out at 50 foot pounds. So now I gotta pull the head, clean the threads, put the head back on, and uh, probably not a bad idea, inspect that thing. I think the head gasket's bad anyways, since it won't seal on the first cylinder. So now we're gonna be pulling the engine, pulling the head, maybe buy new bolts, new head gasket, or should I just do a KA24, I don't know. I still kind of would like to see this engine run better, but uh, this is not good. Anyways, enjoy 31. So here's all the hardware. These little bolts are the same bolts for the regulator and the glass, and also the dash. And different bolts to hold on. This prevents the glass from going down too far. This is a locking mechanism. They are different right and left. Oh, and then of course the handle and the regulator. Just left it. I just left it down there. Can you see it? I don't need the rag anymore. Well, I'll leave the rag in there just in case the glass suddenly falls. It won't explode in my face. But, uh, yeah, so now you put the regulator in and put in these four bolts. It's actually pretty easy to do compared to most vehicles I've done. Here it goes. How to install a regulator? Maybe. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Ooh, I put my hand in grease. Oh, I greased it all up. What an idiot. Oh, my gosh. Bolt line up. None of these bolt holes line up, so that's not right. I'm on the wrong side of the track. bar right here and this bar is on the wrong side of the track so down this hole. okay I just got the regulator in between the door and the chrome I got two bolts in it's not connected to the glass now the trick is to lower the glass down you got to bend the regulator and kind of slide it in so I have to take those two bolts off, hold the glass with one hand, and uh, do a little behind the door surgery. You know what I could do? Is I could probably put these stoppers on to keep the glass from going down too far. They don't need it going down too far anymore. So I think, I didn't do it this way last time, but I'm gonna try something different here. I'm gonna put this limiter on. That way I don't need to worry about the glass going down more than it needs to go. It only needs to go down to come out. This one's no adjustment needed, it just goes on. Okay, that should be like an extra helping hand. So now if I drop the glass, So there's the track right there. So now the trick is I gotta put the regulator in that slot. And what I've done before is you can put something in here with this useless light. Keep it from turning off, please. It's kind of neat keeping that neighborhood. Or I could do the same thing with my little second hand. Little Home Depot helper here. Let's try that. Okay, now I got the window where I want. I'm gonna unhook, take up my flip flops, and then I try to 
connect that to that. Oh my god, this hole is not very big. So take out the screws off the regulator. It's in the right neighborhood now. I have to do a backflip in there and everything. Just take this thing off. I don't even know what position it's in. It doesn't seem to really matter. There's probably a trick to this. There you go, see the little ball? Slide that in the groove. Now put this back up in that hole over there. Please. Oh, I just put my finger on the grease again. I did it! That's all downhill from here, folks. All right. Put my hand in these tiny little holes. You got big hands. I'm sorry for you, this is gonna suck. And of course, none of the holes line up now. But it's technically connected to the glass. So now, if I move the glass until it moves the regulator to where I want the bolts line up, maybe I can crank the handle. <sighs> There's probably a trick to this. I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But it's in the neighborhood. Sitting on the floor. Okay. Just need one bolt to line up. Just give me one bolt, please. Okay, kill one. One of them is right here. I think it needs to go down more. You want to go down? Oh, crap. Let go. Let's go down more. That's what I gotta do, crank the window. Oh. I didn't have this problem with the other side. I must have had though. Oh, there's a hole. Is it? Oh my God, there's a bolt. There's a bolt. Oh. Okay, I got one. These are quarter inch by 28. I believe they're standard. They're also 0.9 metrics. I don't think they're metric. Unless they're like seven millimeters or something weird. I don't know. I think they're standard. So now I got it. Oh, look, I turned the handle. There's another one. It's working. Amazing. Oh, there's another one. There they all line up now. In your way. Give me another one. That's trash. And of course, I only got like 20 extra bolts and I can't find any of them. Seriously. Seriously, people. Where all the bolts go. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna kill somebody. Now the next trick is putting the bolts in this glass. Same bolts that hold this on, kind of hold this on. But I put tape. So now that the glass is technically in, oh, oh by the regulator. <clears throat> I could probably take this tape off. Let's see how easy that is. Uh, you see what I'm doing? <sighs> Where's the stupid light? Get your ass over here to work. I put tape over these holes because they were scratching up my tent. You probably don't need to do that. Why don't you tent your window first, like I did. Of course, some more bolts. Two more nice, clean, perfect bolts. They're not stripped out from people that don't know how to use the right Phillips. You gotta use the number three, people. Don't use the number two on a number three hole or vice versa. Ruin it for the next guy. I can't stand up, people. Too stupid to use the right Phillips. Oh, I just put my hand in the grease again. Oh my God. Who is the idiot that greased the hell out of this one? It's in. Ooh. Ooh. Well, maybe it's not. Oh, such a dirty job. 
this one, oh, I just put my hand in the grease again. <laughs> this one is a little bit off. Probably all the weight of the glasses. Shit went the wrong way. There we go, I'll just take the weight off the door. It's all the weight of the glass is on this area of steel right here. I don't know if you can see I'm lifting it with my left hand. in all right all four bolts what i'll probably do is wind the window all the way up to the top <clears throat> hold the weight off of here and then tighten these four bolts there isn't much adjustment but that's what i'll do because normally you have to adjust regulators you don't adjust them so they don't bind as you go up and down but that's in now the last step is to put the door lock thing in Whew. I'm getting hot out of here. It's gonna be like I think it's gonna be like 95 again today. Almost over with summer. I think tomorrow is the end of summer or something. Can't lift my tape anymore. But this was the, my best idea I've had in a long time. If you don't put tape on this glass, you cannot get this glass out. I don't know how you're gonna grab it through that little slot. There's no way you can get it with your hands. I don't care what kind of Unless you're ET or something, super long fingertips. I couldn't, once I got it all together, I couldn't get the glass up. So, that was. This is the original windshield washer nozzle jet thing that was on the hood. I took it off so I could paint it, and it wasn't easy to get off. This copper or brass washer, I think it took off some threads, maybe not. But then there's a steel washer and a rubber washer. And this goes on the hood and it had two little needles, you know, shaders. One of them was missing and one I broke. Looks like it's all copper. It's obviously screws in here and it's got little pinholes. I can't find another one of these. Not yet anyways. It'd be nice if we just buy one. But I'm thinking maybe I'd love to get this back on the truck. Sand it up. Even if I could just put in some modern jets. Get an easy out. Trail those out. Tap those. Put the hose on the bottom. I love to get that back on the truck. It's all it's aluminum, which doesn't really match anything else, but I guess I could polish it up to a shine. I don't know, maybe just a waste of time. Maybe you just put a black plastic GB1 like all the new trucks have. I think I'll do that temporarily, but I love to get this back on the truck. Um, or if you know where to get one of these, let me know, because uh, if I could just buy another one, that'd be cool too. So this is the screws. I'm thinking I'm using 40s or 45s. I think 45s. Oh yeah, the 45s are missing. Look, let's see, there's four or five. Yeah, I must be using the 45s for my taillights. This is my 520, 520 taillights. These are the screws that made it all possible because those lenses are so big and I need a small head and I want it stainless. So the little screws that came with it were tiny, useless. So I'm screwing these into root nuts. These are four millimeter, 45 millimeters long. 40s may actually work too, but I think they're like 10 bucks Amazon for 50. I don't even know you can get bolts this long. That thing. I don't buy a lot of four millimeters. Anyways, now I do. I just received the uh, A4056 hose. So this is the uh, L hose that goes for the coolant bypass. Let's see if it fits. It's a pretty small hose. Man, that's a really small hose. It goes on there. It's the big end goes on. I don't know if I have that metal line right. Uh, I think I need to move that. I don't think I have that clip on the right place. May actually go over here, I'm not sure. All right, I just hooked up the last hose. I've got the uh, hard line down there painted black and installed with the L hose and the, some silicone. I got the heater hoses blocked. And I'm putting water in the radiator. I don't know when the last time this thing had water in it. Probably, I'm assuming 
many, many years ago. I have no idea when it's in my frame. Let's see, I'm just putting water because I don't know if anything leaks. This is one gallon. Oh no, am I spilling on the bottom? Not great, I overfilled it. Probably is leaking out already. I have no idea if there's any holes anywhere. A gallon filled it up? That's... That's weird. Got to take more than that. So I still got zero compression. Now I got zero compression on the intake. I mean on cylinder one. I took the valve cover off. I just moved the... Uh, check it. I've got uh, zero valve clearance on the exhaust valve here. Didn't take one I checked it before I turned it, it was good. Like this one here, I got that many thousands. But I got zero, zero, uh, you can tell by just moving the uh, rocker. So that's loose. This one is not loose. I just turned it. The uh, exhaust is not closing. So, looks like the valves are out of adjustment. So let's adjust those once. Because I got 120 compression on all cylinders except for the first one. I had 30 before, I put oil in it. It's back in the air to fix the exhaust leak. Well, exhaust leaks because it was never welded on. But uh, I think I may have just found the problem why it doesn't idle. I just pulled out the primary jet right here. And I looked through it and it was a pinhole and I blew through it and it became a much bigger pinhole. So I think there was something plugging it. I found out that that's the primary jet. So I just installed the hood latch. Um, I had to take the grill out to install it. I don't even have an own a cable yet, so I'm gonna have to go back in there to add the cable. But I bought some brand new six millimeter bolts. I went ahead and used the angle, they uh, whatever stainless, just to match. I figured instead of using an old Nissan bolt, I think these are uh, standard, but six millimeter by one was uh, pretty close. Same as the hood bolts, so I'm just using metric just to make it easier. I painted my door panels, these kick panels rather. I actually painted them with white, uh, what do you call it, kilns. And then I painted them with black. And uh, I got left in the rain a few times. Actually it looked pretty good, pretty flat for being waterlogged. But I left them in the rain, you know, in the sun for 100 degrees for a couple of days, so they're definitely dry. I don't even know what they look like, I'm going to try putting them in. Alright, so I just put the glove box on with my nut inserts, what do you call them? Lip nuts, whatever you call them. And I don't have a knob yet. I've got two doors and no knob. And I've got two latches. I just found the original latch. I thought I didn't have one, but I just found it. So I need to install that. I don't have the latch that holds that. I'm going to have to make one. And obviously I need to make the box itself. At least I've painted it. Now I've got cup holders again. So now I've got two cup holders. So, and also I've painted the ashtray. They were pretty nice. I couldn't really get it apart. So I just painted it inside and out. And uh, it looks new again. And I think it's kind of hitting the wiring. I haven't painted the dash or done anything with the dash yet. I'll do that in phase two. At least I'll have the glove box. I just need a knob. I'll lock that up. I just put a little bit more gas in. So I think I've got almost three gallons now in the tank. That gas gauge is definitely working. I've got both lights working. The temperature gauge, I haven't noticed to go up. I ran it quite a bit. I just welded the exhaust. It's way quieter. The muffle was never welded on. It was like tech welded on. So uh, now I can run it again, and I think I fixed the idle, and I fixed the hard start issue, so getting really close. Just need, I need to lead the clutch, and so I can actually technically drive it. So I think I'll do that next. Okay, just started the truck with cold, let it idle. Five ten minutes. I got no fast idle at all. 
So I took this thing apart. That's how it was set. It's on YouTube, that thing's supposed to stick out more. So I guess it's adjustable. I'm gonna put it back together. I'm gonna start, if you turn it in, that pushes it. Let me see if that bumps up the fast idle. Cause it'll, it'll only idle. I do it with my feet. Clean it out correctly. So this is, oops, let me put the spring back in. There's a spring in here. This is supposed to be the fast idle mechanism. Hey, the good news is, uh, looks like all my lights work now. I start the truck, put the headlights on. Look, my high beam indicator works now. It's red though. gas pedal she does so no idle it's warmed up as you can see I don't know what this thing needs all right I'm taking the carb top off there is actually some dirt in this fuel bowl fuel bowl seems kind of empty though to me I had it running yesterday I would think it would have more gas in there than that is it starving for gas? Is that the problem? I don't know. I have no idea. Is that the right amount of gas in there? It's very low. Is the float bowl out of adjustment or something? I don't know. I was expecting to see it fuller than that. <clears throat> I suppose you can see all the jets from here. I guess I'll just take them out and clean them. I took this primer jet one out again. This air jet, and there was dirt on it again. There's a little bit of dirt in the bottom of the carb. Hmm. I don't know, this thing will just not idle at all. All right, so I think my no idle issue is uh, because there's zero compression in cylinder one. The other three are good. I just took all the plugs out, I just rechecked. I've definitely got some clearance. I just loosened up the other valve. I made sure, well now it's opening, but made sure that the valves are not getting stuck open. I can see them going up and down when I crank it. And I got zero compression. It's weird because I had zero, I had 30 originally. Then I put some oil in there and I went up to 240. Now it's at zero. So I've either got a hole in the piston or something, which is odd, or ring broke or something, or the rings are just stuck. So I think the reason why it won idle is that there's zero compression on cylinder zero. I added oil to it a few times, let it soak a day or two, and I got 240 PSI once. The engine runs really smooth, but I think it's running on three cylinders. And um, the reason I think it's only running on three cylinders, even though it runs pretty smooth on three at 600 RPM, if I manually control it, is because it, there's no smoke coming out the back. If cylinder one was firing, it would be burning off all that oil I put in there. And uh, it's not smoking. It just runs smooth. So it's basically a really good three cylinder. And I think it's a little bit wet down here. So I think the head gasket is blown. That's what I'm guessing. So I think I need a new head gasket. Why is the truck so hot in here?
I just checked the first bolt and it wasn't 43 foot pounds. So maybe these heads are just loose. So I just did that one. Should be one. Oh my god, these bolts are not tight. I'll take a few over here. Wow, maybe it's. Are you watching this? Maybe it's this one. Wow. It's not tight. Well, that's the first. Who would have thought the head was loose? I don't know if I got some compression now. I've probably blown the gasket now. That's 43 foot pounds. That's what I read in the book. I don't think it's, uh, where am I to go? I don't think it's going to be that easy to fix this problem. If I ruin the gasket. So I wonder if it has a new gasket. If somebody took the head off, then they would have had to put a new gasket in there, right? 43 doesn't seem tight enough. What do I know? It's 43 now. Zaro. Put the old compression gauge back in and it's weird I got 120 on three of them and zero. I had 30 on this one and it went to zero. I probably blew the gasket out or something. It's supposed to be a steel ring around the cylinder. So maybe I didn't. Maybe there's hope. I don't really want to take the head off, but I don't feel like I'm going to be taking the head off. Can you see that? What's that gauge? No compression. All right, gasket's wasted. Bummer. Okay. I think I got a hole in the piston or I got a bad gasket. I don't know if I should buy a boroscope or just pull the head off. I think I'm just gonna pull the head off. Zero compression. It's just the hell we can put the plugs back in and run it one more time. That's the case. Besides, maybe it is a stuck ring or something stupid. back in that's the worst that could happen kaboom I was thinking about running some uh, 
What's that uh, oil you put down the car? Stupid uh, cleaner stuff. Uh, white stuff that smokes for 30 minutes. Put it in your gas tank. Pour, put in, the, suck it in the intake and clean out your intake. What is that stuff called? I can't remember what it's called. The head wasn't even tight. Oh my gosh. I did double check the rod connecting bolts, but I had the pan off. I did check the torque on those. Those are actually good. I was just kind of concerned on what was tight and what was not on this thing. Ah, great. truck up in the air. Why is this harder than it needs to be? I got oil all over the flipping head. All over my hands, I can't tighten anything. So now we need to whip those down.